can let's just start. So, uh, thank you, Koki and um, Ryo. Uh, do you prefer Ryo? Ryoichi? Ryo. Ryo okay. Ryo. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Ryo san, and uh, thank you for um, letting me ask you some questions about what it is to be a gallerist and an artist in Japan. So, Koki, if you could maybe start. Um, I'm curious, how did you decide to become a gallerist? Like, what did you do before? And then what made, like, what pushed you over into this decision? Um, so to sort of talk about my background first, I guess. Um, well, I'm, I'm Japanese, but I was raised in New York City. Um, both my parents are artists. And uh, so for me, the first time living in Japan was from college. Whoa. And um, because my parents were artists, I was always kind of, I guess, as a child, you know, growing up in New York City, I was always sort of close to art. I, you know, regularly visited museums with my parents, visited galleries, um, and the the apartment building I grew up in was is is called Westbeth, and it's this big artist housing for artists and musicians, and so I was literally surrounded by hundreds of artists growing up. And, um, and in college, I um, majored in art history. And the first job I had after university was, um, I worked briefly for Sotheby's. They have an office in Tokyo. And that was my first sort of art job that I had. And while I was working there, I sort of became I started to think it would be more interesting to start my own thing, to, to actually run my own gallery. And after I left Sotheby's, I did work for a different company that um, specialized in selling uh, Japanese woodblock prints from the Edo period, which is um, like the 19th century. Mm. And, um, and I decided to do my own gallery and I wanted to do a contemporary art gallery because I wanted to work with living artists and sort of, um, well, hopefully kind of create or become part of art history, um, the, not just the gallery, but also the artists that I work with. And uh, so your question was why- oh, Right, no, you're answering it. Yeah, why you right. said to become a gallerist, yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah. what is it like to be a gallerist in Tokyo? Um, and then maybe the differences between, you know, the states um, and here. And then maybe, uh, Ryo-san, you could talk about like the difference between being or having a gallery in, you know, Europe versus here or, you know, elsewhere. Yes. So I think, um, well, I started my gallery nine years ago. Wow, yesterday congratulations. Actually, thank you. Yesterday was actually <laughs> the ninth anniversary. So I, I started my gallery on March 9th. Um, but I think, um, so when I started out, I was, I did, I didn't really think that, you know, um, it would be this difficult, you know, operating a gallery. Um, the first two years was extremely difficult for me. Um, and uh, I think having a gallery in Tokyo, um, I started the year, right, well, the year following the big earthquake. And mm -hmm. the economy was really bad. Uh, and um, I started in a neighborhood called Bakurocho, which I, is where I still am. And there were more, uh, back then, there were more galleries in the neighborhood. Um, mm. Some have closed, some have moved. Um, and over the past maybe two or three years, there has been a number of new galleries that have opened in the, in the area, which mm -hmm. is good. And um, so running a gallery in Tokyo, I think it's, it's, it can be very challenging. I mean, Tokyo is a huge city um you know a big population um but when you compare it to a city like new york for example uh there are you know there aren't that many art collectors um but over the years i think um there has been an, 
a big increase in the number of younger art collectors, people in their mm -hmm. maybe 30s, early 40s, um, who who have you know just started collecting, um, which is which which is a good trend. And uh, so for me, running an art gallery in Japan or in Tokyo, um, I try to show my artists abroad as much as I can. Um, so I do a number of art fairs a year. Mm. Uh, now because of COVID, um, the last time I went to an art fair overseas was exactly a year ago, which was in New York in March. Um, but usually I would, you know, go to Taiwan or go, go to uh, Seattle uh, and do these art fairs and, and bring some of my artists and, and show their work there. And, um, uh, you know, doing a gallery in Japan, it's, it's, uh, um, I, I would, you know, assume it's very different from, you know, doing a gallery in New York. Um, mm. not just because of the number of collectors, um, there's, I guess there's less competition in Tokyo mm. compared to New York, fewer galleries. Um, and also, uh, there, are, there isn't much writing about art done in Japan. Um, oh, interesting. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's less compared to um, the States. Uh, there are art critics, of course, there are writers, but um, it's rare for them to review shows. Uh, there are some good uh, like monthly art magazines um, and they may, they might have a few reviews, but a lot of them are, when you read them, it's more like an introduction of an exhibition. Um, they don't really, uh, go into, uh, crit criticism. And, um, I was just talking about this earlier today with someone else, but, um, you know, like in New York, there are many art critics who, who write in the New York Times, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of different other, you know, news outlets. But in Japan, um, it's, it's very rare. Um, newspapers don't usually have reviews. Um, so the lack of criticism um, is, I would say it's, it's kind of, I mean, I think criticism is, is it's very necessary in any field um but the lack of that in japan is it, it can be uh you know i mean if, if an artist gets a good review that can sort of boost his career but that doesn't usually happen that often in japan interesting i wonder yeah. why that is ryo-san do you have any comments about that the lack of writing or criticism mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think uh, Japanese um, hesitate to comment uh, uh, anything, not just uh, art. For example, uh, movie or anime, or the, uh, we we always uh, uh, <clears throat> how, how can I say uh, take care of uh, another people's opinion or uh feeling or so we uh, uh try to uh how can i say express and and sort of hide mm -hmm. hide mm -hmm. and uh, yeah <clears throat> yeah it's i think it's a uh, typical japanese language or the <clears throat> communication way, mm -hmm. so that uh, in, uh, English is more uh, more dialect. Right, right. So, right. so, so that that's a different. Uh, yeah, I think. Oh, interesting. Can I ask, how did you guys meet, Koki? How did you find Ryo, or did Ryo come to one of your shows, or? I I. I saw his works at an exhibition. Um, he was, this was back in 2012 
He was showing at um, Lixil Gallery, which mm -hmm. I think no longer exists. Um, they closed maybe last year, I think. But it, it's, uh, it was located in um, near Kyobashi, which is very close to Ginza. Mm -hmm. And Lixil is a, uh, it's a, it's a, do you know what it is? It's, it's a company that um, they make like. Electronics? Uh, like consumer know. goods? Like, they make like toilets. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and they have their own art gallery. And um, I believe it was, it's, it's more like a nonprofit space, I guess. And, mm -hmm. um, he was having a solo show there. And I didn't know anything about um, Yoichi at the time. And I just walked in. Um, I saw his paintings and um, I was impressed by them. And so I, I, you know, I walked up to one of the staff there and asked, um, is there any way I can get in touch with the artist? And I gave the person my card. And I think so she, she contacted Doichi and told him that, um, you know, a gallerist wanted to get in touch with you, with him. And, and, and like, I think it was like the next day he, I got a phone call from Doichi. And that's how we sort of got to know each other. Um. That's cool. Uh, one thing that I did notice about Japan, which I don't see so much in the States, mm -hmm. is that there are galleries um, or museum or art spaces in all the department stores, most department yeah. stores, um, yes. in little nooks or like maybe a little hallway space, um, and they rotate rather quickly, which I think is awesome because I feel like that um, allows more public engagement you know, and it's sort of like also a surprise. You go to the department store and you're like, oh, look, some cool work. Um, why? And and there's none of that in the States. Um, mm. Why? I, I mean, I wish that they had more of that. Can you talk about that a yeah. little bit? That's that's a really good point. Um, so Japan has a long history of department stores selling art. Um, it goes back decades, like. Um, maybe close to a century, I don't know. But um, so every major um, department store, not only in Tokyo, but in other cities, um, they, they, they usually do have an art gallery and um, the, the shows usually like last for six days or like a week. And um, over the past several years, they have started to show contemporary art mm -hmm. but um until very recently it was mostly more like um i refer to them as like japanese traditional paintings mm -hmm. um so and they still show a lot i think a good majority of the shows at department stores are usually you know like tr more traditional stuff that they show um and a lot of people do buy art at department stores especially um if you're not if you're not really a contemporary art collector um and especially if you're not in tokyo um you're you don't know anything about art galleries and you think department stores are the place to buy art um like mitsukoshi uh takashimaya these are like big themes and and when you don't know too much about art you, um you think, well, if I want to buy a painting, I might as well just buy it from, you know, a big department store because it's probably safer that way. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's how a lot of um, people see it, you know, um, and uh, and department stores they have, uh, you know, their top clients who not only buy art but they they could buy like jewelry or expensive watches mm. and um so i i actually did i mean before i worked for i started my own gallery i did sell woodblock prints through the department stores so mm, uh -huh. um, i know how their system works um so basically you would uh if there's a show at, at, um, at a department store for one week, prior to that, pri the, the two weeks prior to the show, 
you would um, get in a car with the uh, department salesperson and go to as many uh, clients you can visit and try to, to sell the art. You would hand carry the artwork with you and mm -hmm. go to the clients' homes and try to, you know, sell or promote the artwork. Um, and not just art dealers, but like, you know, I've seen, you know, people selling carpets, expensive carpets, um, you know, jewelry and all sorts of expensive uh, goods. And the, the clients, they, they, they have to buy a certain amount um, each year to sort of maintain their, you know, top client status. So it doesn't have to be art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be. It can be food or it can be anything. And um, right. so that's a sort of uh, a very Japanese custom, you know. Um, I don't know if that exists in America, but um, it's still, it, it's a system that still does exist in, in Japan. Um, not so much in Tokyo, but if you go to, you know, especially in the countryside, um, when you don't live close to the city, um, you know, you buy everything from department stores and they would, and they would come to you. Um, they would, if you say, I want to buy, I don't know, it could be anything. I want to buy some new clothes. They would just bring it to you. Interesting. If you're, if you're a, an important client. Um, That's fascinating. That is so yeah. different. It um, is very different. Um, and so a lot of the art galleries in Tokyo, um, the contemporary art galleries, they sort of didn't really like that system um, because a lot of the, uh, in most cases, the, the um, collectors didn't really understand or appreci appreciate the art. And um, so I don't know if you've heard of like Tomio Koyama Gallery, which is a, a big yeah. gallery. They've yeah. been around about like 20, 25 years, but he's- In he Roppongi, like, right? They're in Roppongi now, yeah. So he, uh, Koyama-san, he was one of the sort of, I guess the pioneers of the Japanese contemporary art scene. So he, he among with all, some other galleries, they've kind of created this sort of new um, art scene in Japan. And, and I would, I guess, you know, when you categorize the many different, um, you know, Japanese art scenes, I would say my gallery is in the same uh, art scene as, you know, some of the galleries in Roppongi. And so I see myself a little bit different from, you know, department stores. Um, the clients are different. Um, the artwork that I show uh, is, is different. Yeah. Um... I was, so, how can I ask this question? So what what do you think, um, mm -hmm. both of you, how, what do you think um, needs to happen or um, is maybe happening um, a little bit now? You know, because you guys, you have a gallery and I've been to Tomio Koyama Gallery and they show some really great work uh, also. What, what, what is happening now that could like sort of grow this contemporary art movement? Um, like maybe where, like uh, Ryosa, where do you go to see art? Um, because as an artist, I mean, is art your full-time job? Or yeah. do you, okay, that's amazing. And you are so lucky uh, because many artists I know, um, um, you know, they have another job. Usually they teach, um, you know, or they're a faculty in an art college or something like that. But usually they're like, you know, piecing things together. Um, where do you go to see art? Mm, I think um, um, gallery is it? yeah, more so, yeah. Uh, museum and uh, art fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to uh, visit a uh, department to watch artworks and because then, <clears throat> I don't know, it, it's uh, boring for me. <laughs> and 
they um I, I have never uh, showed my artworks and uh, with them but um, um maybe they don't like my artworks and maybe they don't like uh, <clears throat> the artworks in which express them about uh, uh <clears throat> society or government or social issue or mm -hmm. such they don't like and uh, so for me they like to show more uh, kitsch or beautiful or traditional artworks or um so <clears throat> so they just uh, uh they, they just uh, show to sell artworks and the goods to rich people so that I, I'm not so interested in so that a gallery museum artware or um uh, <clears throat> art kind of uh, event mm, yeah mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm writing this down but um <laughs> it's habit uh, <laughs> uh interesting hmm Oh, you know, I also noticed um, that you show at other galleries. Uh, can you guys talk about how, like in Portland, you, if you show in one like city, you don't normally show six minutes away in the same city. You have to either be in another big city or like, you know, if you're in a California LA gallery, you'd have to I think, you know, show maybe in Seattle or San Francisco or a different gallery, but is, is there, is that difference that like sort of um, that line, is that this, is that the same here in Japan or could you show in like, you know, galleries close by? It's like, yeah, it's the same in Tokyo, but uh, it's uh, <clears throat> complicated to explain, so please coach it. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah. Basically, yeah, if you have a gallery in Tokyo, um, you would only show at that one gallery. Um, mm -hmm. if you, you might show in other group exhibitions in, in okay. Tokyo. Um, and in Yoichi's case, when I first um, met him, he was already showing at a gallery um, in Kyobashi called uh, Gallery Tsubaki. And they've been around for for, for many years it, um, and so, and I wanted to show his work. So I, uh, we had a meeting, Yoichi, me and um, the owner of Gallery Tsubaki. And I sort of asked him, asked the owner if it would be okay if I could have, you know, a solo exhibition of Yoichi's work at my gallery. And, you know, he was very, he was very kind. He was saying, um, you know, it's fine. And, and I, I remember he, he was mentioning he mentioned that um, his gallery, um, they, they do um, art fairs in Asia, like Korea and Taiwan. And he was, he was saying that, um, Koki, if you can, you know, show his work, like in the US or Europe, um, that's something that I won't be able to do. So mm. I'm more than for you to, you know, help Yoichi have more exposure um, in the West. And um, so galleries can um, sort of work that way together uh, to sort of um, have the same artist. But uh, but usually, um, yeah, if you if you show in Tokyo, uh, you might want to have another gallery somewhere else, like in Osaka, for example. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I think in that way, it's, it's very similar to uh, Portland. I think. Yeah. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Um, what I'm curious about uh, the artist community, not necessarily the exhibiting part. Um, as an artist myself, it's I've found it a little bit difficult to meet other artists, probably because I can't read Japanese, and that makes it a little bit harder. Um, but thank God for Google Translate, because even though it's a little bit, you know, not always accurate it's better than 20 years ago when there was no Google Translate and you were just wandering around hoping that you found, you know, so you would just go to the big galleries. This is, you know, me in Yokohama, just like kind of walking around. And I kind of do that still today. I'll just, you know, walk around and go inside somewhere and, and oh, look, a gallery. <laughs> um, 
so can you talk about the community and how you um where where do they hang out like how do they get together well um so you 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 came to japan when was it last year or two years ago um let's see yeah january 2020 is when we arrived um okay. in tokyo so, 20 years right. ago i was in yokohama or 25 oh, okay. oh i didn't know that okay <laughs> yeah so uh, well this time when you arrived in, in 2020 in january that is right before covid yeah and um, there aren't that many gatherings. Um, you know, ga my, my gallery hasn't had an opening reception for over a year. The last one was in January last year. So um, it, it's been difficult for um, people to sort of meet new people. I, mm. I have a friend who came, an art collector last year, and he was asking me, where would I meet other you know, collectors my age? And I was saying, well, normally there would be like a, a gallery opening. And if you you know, for example, if I had a gallery opening at, um, at my gallery, um, and if you come, I could introduce you to some other collectors, but, you know, there is no, um, you know, opportunity for that to happen. And, right. Um, and as for artists, I think, um, well, I mean, I'm not an artist myself, but I know that many artists, they might share studios somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, usually in the outskirts of Tokyo, uh i know that like places like sagamihara for example they have many artist studios um they also have many art schools so a lot of people who okay. graduate art schools in that area they just you know move into a studio and um and i think in a studio there might be like i don't know like five to maybe ten artists mm -hmm. and so they have their own small community um but i think in general, not just artists, but I think in general, I, I think, um, I guess many Japanese people are, are not as outgoing as, you know, New Yorkers are, for example. Um, if you if you go to, you know, pre-COVID, if you go to a gallery opening in Tokyo, even if it were a, a big gallery, even if it were an opening for a, a pretty well-known artist, um, the crowd is is not that big, and it can be very quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to if you go to a gallery opening in New York <laughs> or even in Portland, I, I'd assume it's you know, so loud. Know, it's very loud, right? And you see people <laughs> talking, um, you know, drinking, um, and it's it seems like something is happening. So. Um, maybe it's just the jap it's it could be just a japanese thing people are very quiet they don't know how to uh party i guess and um they're not very good at socializing and mm. they, they many people tend to just you know hang out with the people that they they know um, right um i like to sort of introduce people to other people so if i'm in that um sort of situation i would you know if, if i know like an artist and if i have a different artist who i know you know i might you know introduce them or you know like a, an, another gallery or a collector or a curator um and so i i think openings in general can be a very you know good opportunity for for people to you know sort of interact and um network but um it's it's been you know difficult to sort of meet new people or network in the art world for yeah. you know year or so um but yeah okay so it's not just me then <laughs> yeah i mean no it's covid duh it's COVID, yeah <laughs> um it's uh yeah i mean i so i mean i guess for galleries hmm. um i mean there has been a few like local art fairs i mean there's an art fair next week in tokyo oh yeah i'm for, going to that <laughs> yeah art fair in tokyo so for galleries um <laughs> when you're in an art fair you you kind of i mean i sort of tend to become friends with other exhibitors mm. um so i guess for galleries you know an art fair can be a way to sort of network mm -hmm. um but i think 
also for artists uh you know pre-covid some people would do you know open studios mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah so usually uh the the studios that i mentioned in sagamihara they usually have like a an open studio event usually in november i think um but yeah and also of course you know i guess a lot of people tend to hang out with their you know old classmates from art school i guess yeah i mean that's i think that's the same um you know yeah it's the same for you know anybody it's hard to either break in or you feel like you're you know you don't want to mess up their their vibe so it's <laughs> it's <laughs> and especially i think um with the you know japanese just being a bit more reserved mm -hmm. um and then you know americans or westerners being more direct there's a balance that you have to find so you know you can't just like yeah you can't, it's it's just there's a, a little you know little dance you have to do Mm. Yeah, and, and you mentioned so like you said 20, 20 years ago you were in Yokohama yeah so yeah. I don't so I, I I don't think there are many I mean there's probably only maybe there's I would say maybe less than five galleries in Yokohama I think wow interesting I mean because I've lived here I haven't really had to go to Yokohama because there's so many like I could just get off on any station on the like Yamanote or wherever and you just do art and then there'll be something you know within like 10 minutes that I can go see um yeah, yeah. so I haven't had to go down to Yokohama <laughs> well I mean so the, much the Yokohama museum is great I mean it's a really nice museum but um and if you go for, you know, further south, they have other museums too. Um, so like many good museums in Kanagawa, but when it comes to galleries, I, um, I mean, Yokohama is a huge city, but um, I'm pretty sure there's only like, yeah, like less than five mm. contemporary galleries in, in, in the whole city of Yokohama, I think. Yeah, uh, interesting. So it's, yeah, people would, you know, I mean, Yokohama is so close to Tokyo. Uh, people in Yokohama probably don't even visit the galleries in Yokohama. They would just go to Tokyo. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, this has been really super enlightening and interesting. And I have a lot more questions, but um, I think we'll wrap it up with this last one. Um, okay. So what what is a day in your life? Uh, uh, Koki and then Ryo-san. Sorry, what is the what? What is a day? What does a day in your gallery and artist life look like? I mean, it could be today. It could be. Oh, okay. Um, for me, it really depends on. Uh, so, like today, for example. Uh, in the morning, there was a there was an art collector who was giving a, a talk at a uh, there's something called the Asia Society. She was, you know, giving a talk, and I sort of joined in mm -hmm. through Zoom, and um, I asked a few questions, and um, and I I have I also have a family. I have three kids, so after that. You know, I brought them to, you know, to like daycare and everything. Uh -huh. um, came back. I'm having this meeting with you. Um, and after this, I'm going to get ready to go to the gallery. And then um, right now I'm having an exhibition at my gallery that runs until Saturday. Peter um, Shear. Peter Shear. Mm. And he's an artist from Indiana. Um, he's American. And so next week I have Art Fair Tokyo coming up. So I am, you know, in contact with the artist I'm going to show at the fair every day. Um, I know that he sent, oh, he, he's in California. I know that he mm. sent the paintings, uh, I believe yesterday. And so through FedEx and I'm a Wait. little bit <laughs> worried if, you know, if I'm able to, you know, Get the paintings in time. I, I track the shipment. It's supposed to arrive on Monday, but 
but you know, mm -hmm. no, it might get stuck in customs. So if it does get stuck, I'm gonna have to, you know, call FedEx, the airport, and everything. Um, oh. So all of that. Um, and I'm still waiting for the artist to send me the images. I'm gonna once I get that, I'm gonna, you know, create like a price list and a PDF, send it to you know my, my collectors. Um, and I still have, uh, you know. Um, I'm, I'm still, you know, talking to some people about, you know, I'm inviting people to the fair. Um, and I have a meeting later today with uh, someone from Artsy. Artsy is, a, is an online platform oh, uh -huh. um, that sells, yeah, for, for galleries to sell artwork. And I'm going to have like a new liaison. So I'm, I'm going to have a meeting with her um and yeah during the day you know during the weekdays i i might get like you it's usually less than 10 visitors to the gallery um on a regular weekday hmm. um, so usually on a saturday i might get like 20 people sometimes okay. even more, like like 25 people maybe is that um, pre-covid also or is it just covid um, actually, I think more people are coming to the gallery now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it sounds strange, but I think more people are visiting galleries. And um, I think all the galleries in Tokyo are open now. Some are only open, like maybe only a small number are open only by appointment. Um, but for my gallery, um, all you need to do is just wear a mask and um, sanitize your hands when you when you enter. So uh, people do visit galleries, um, and yeah. So that's that's my right. So my gallery is open until seven p.m. Um, and of course, when a lot of people come to my gallery, I I, I tend to talk to a lot of people. So I don't get the other work done. So <laughs> after seven, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I start responding to emails or whatever. Um, and I'm at the gallery usually until like 7.30, 7.45, and then I go home, mm. uh, have dinner, spend some time with the kids, um, put them to sleep. And then I start, you know, uh, writing some more emails mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of email writings um to be done every day and yeah. actually over, over the past month or so um sometimes i i i listen to clubhouse which has been sort of it can be a little bit entertaining um so yeah that has you know it's, it's kind of like listening to the radio i, I don't really oh, listen mm -hmm. and, uh, you can listen to it and and you know do other things at the same time so yeah that's yeah. to like if it's like you know if you're on social media you would have to you know stare on stare at your phone the whole time but you don't need to do that so yeah yeah i've dropped in on some of the clubhouse meetings even the japanese ones and i'm like okay this is kind of you know just getting me used to hearing japanese and then <laughs> and then you're and then i get overloaded because i don't know what they're talking about yeah and, and some 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 <laughs> are ridiculous it's not worth listening listening to <laughs> You know, I've, I've seen a lot of, I don't know, like artists, I, I don't know if I should be saying this, but I've seen a lot of like artists who don't really, I mean, who, who call themselves artists, but they're, they're not really, you know, I don't know. I mean, and, and they would like be giving advice to other people and <laughs> they're not really um they're not really good advices um I, i've also seen you know and some collectors they 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 think they know everything and they just you know um, i don't know it, it can be a mess but, that sounds um, like a great like um like it sounds like something that maybe would be a great spoof to create you know like how wayne's world is sort of a spoof on like a underground tv show that would be uh, kind of hilarious actually hmm i'll think but, about uh, that yeah. <laughs> But um, Mur I think Murakami has been like on Clubhouse almost e every night or something. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I think. And cool. usually, you know, thousands of listeners, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's how I, um, that's my regular day. Um, so a, after, after the art fair, um, I'm going to take about like a week off though. Um, after the fair. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how my regular day. Awesome. Ryo san, are you going to the studio today? Yeah, um, yeah, here's my studio and uh, yeah, I usually work up at uh, 11 a.m. <laughs> very late and uh, yeah, check uh, email or um, more, um, what do you do? He has a lot of freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of time so yeah seeing what i do today maybe shopping maybe drive uh, or read a book or listen music and uh, yeah it, you know um keep motivation is a bit difficult so mm. it, for me uh, it's really tough to keep working every day every, all the time okay. so yeah, I I need a uh, other 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 thing to relax or yeah I yeah that's yeah that's uh, my daily <laughs> yeah sounds like a sounds like a good day. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much for your time, you guys. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you know one or both of you again soon, uh, maybe at the art fair. Uh, yeah, yeah.